Hello and welcome to the presentation with a very long name, but no worries, it's cached. My name is Yevgen Nedevyasov, I am a senior software engineer at NetCentric. Today it's all about caching. Why do we care that much about caching? Let me give you an example. What is the result of, of this calculation? It's an easy one. I told you, it's simple. But in the real world, not all the calculations are so easy. And we do want to cache to improve performance and decrease load on the server. So we want to do that calculation once, store it in the file on the disk, like simple HTML and including images and so on and so on. And then we want to serve it every time when someone else comes and asks for this information, which we already had. Another example. They've been married for 50 years and one day she asks, Darling, why you never tell me that you love me? I told you once, if something changes, I will let you know. So we want to provide up-to-date content as well. We want to react on any changes as soon as possible. And we still want to cache it. Caching is one of the most challenging things in software. And we faced a couple of challenges on one of our projects. One of them is permission-sensitive caching. We have a setup for internal project and uh, the structure is very difficult and there are a lot of groups and those groups can be configured for the departments or on different levels in the same department. And different content can be restricted with, when using closed user group to restrict an access to these pages. And these restrictions are not predictable, so we cannot know where it's set, so it can be configured with the, by the author and can be can happen on any level. But we still can cache uh, using AM and Dispatcher and we can achieve it with the following configurations. How it works in reality. For that we need two parts. One is an authorization servlet, which serves head request from Dispatcher to AM and does some check. In our example, it's simple, is allowed and returns OK response if the user has an access to this resource, for example, or returns forbidden response if user is not allowed to get this cache, cached version. And on Dispatcher, we have auth check section with the URL of the servlet, which will serve our head requests, with the filter section uh, configuring what requests, what path we want to check via this uh, authentication checker and headers. Another challenge, we want to keep files in cache as long as possible and we don't want to invalidate it. Uh, we don't want to invalidate more than we have to. Quite often we can use stubbed file level uh, when using dispatcher, which means that when you activate some page, then dispatcher will invalidate all the cache and up to the level uh, configured via stat file level. But it might affect much more than we want to, to preserve. If we, if we publish update one page, we don't want to uh, invalidate thousands of other pages. How we can do that? For that we can configure a flash agent and add header, secure action, scope, resource only, which will tell dispatcher to invalidate only the resource which was activated and nothing more. 
When you do that, bear in mind that you also have to configure, to set the checkbox uh, alias update. Quite often we use Sling aliases in different languages to have user-friendly URLs. So if the path is in English, but we have French and Italian version, for example, we can have Sling alias for French and for Italian. When we do resource-only invalidation and we want to flush to delete these files with the alias, we have to check that checkbox. Otherwise, dispatcher will do only a request to the path and will not include the aliases. It increases the amount of requests to invalidate the cache, but it doesn't affect hundreds and thousands of other files. And another very interesting uh, and challenging part was the caching of the navigation. And yeah, as I said before, we have a very complex setup for the user groups and the structure and the content with a lot of restricted pages. But we still want to cache it. And we could achieve that after reviewing the requirements. So what we have? We have about 12,000 users. We have about 4,000 pages uh, per language. And we had an in initial setup about 1,000 pages with already configured closed user group. But again, it can be changed later and user can add, uh, authors can add more restrictions. And to get the whole structure for the navigation in one language, uh, JSON would be about one megabyte because it includes titles of the pages, description, and like so on and so on for all the levels. And then we could do caching per user because we uh, yeah, we have the user ID, we could do the write rules and we could save it in the, in the dispatcher using selector, for example. But then we would end up with cache for navigation only of size 30 gigabytes for three languages. We don't really want to do that. And again, one megabyte JSON on every move on the page for the page, we, we would like to avoid that. So how we could do that? We all know uh, column control from author view, where we load parts like every level one by one. So if we don't request that page, we don't want to get list of children for that page. And thanks for our UX, we could achieve that in our project as well. So how it works, uh, we, as you can see in the tree structure, we have one page with uh, configured closed user groups, which is on level four in plane, but everything else we can cache. So when the request comes to netcentric and we get the list of children, we can cache it because there are no restrictions. We do cache. Then we go, we click on Munich, for example, and then we get the list of the children, events, office, photos. Can we cache it? Yes, because there are no new restrictions on that page. So whoever has an access to Munich channel, uh, Munich page has an access to all the child pages. Then we go one level deeper to events. Can we cache it? Unfortunately, no, because one of the child pages has a restriction, which means that some users can see all three pages on this level, some others can see only two, and we cannot cache it for all the users. 
Then we serve it every time when the request comes to AVM. We tell dispatcher to skip caching for this level and we proceed further. What happens next? If we click in planning, for example, and we do the request to get the children of this page, we can cache it again because there are no uh, child pages with the new restrictions, which means that if user has an access to page in planning, then user will have an access to all the child pages. So we can cache uh, files again. Dispatcher flash rules. It allows you to react on activating of some path and do more than flashing only this path. It uses regex for replication patterns and you can configure whatever you want to flush based on the regex for, for the path. It also has back references in flush path, so you can take part of the path you get for activation using regex. You take it and you uh, do activation or uh, replication on something else and you can also have more than one path or more than one pattern for one match. What are the use cases? We talked about navigation already and uh, if you remember the cache for the navigation is stored on the level higher than the page itself which means that that when you activate new page on that level, we want to flush the cache file on one level higher. And we can do that using the dispatcher flush rules. So, as in the example, if we activate the page IT in the departments, it will flush departments.menu.json, only that file. And we can also activate it in another languages. Of course, you have to know the list of languages up front. In our case, we have three languages and uh, the languages are not very dynamic, so we can hard code the list of the languages, but then using back references, we can flush the same page that's being activated in another languages. Let's have a look how it works on our project. We have restricted page called group A. If we go to page properties and permissions, we see that only group A can see this page. The same we have for page group B, which is restricted to group B. And we have a couple of users. User A, which belongs to group A. And in another window I have user B, which belongs to group B. If we go to group A3 and we open this page, User A has an access to this page. But if you share, for example, this link with another user and try to access it, you will get forbidden response because you don't have rights to do that, to access this page. And the same happens another way. Here you have an access to group B, you share the link, but user A doesn't have rights to see this page. So you get forbidden response again. And we have public area, which is accessible for both users. But what happens in the, in dispatcher? We have folder events, we have group A, group B and public area. And as you can see, everything is cached there on every level, even for group A and group B, 
pages itself, we have a cached version of it. But dispatcher will check using AM if user can access this page. And for the navigation, we saw the structure, we have events, group A, public, and let's have a look what we have in dispatcher cache for that. So we have events, and there is no such a file as events.menu.json because children have different restrictions, so we cannot cache on that level. Group A children, for example, don't have new, new restrictions and we can cache that file. So we have group a.menu.json, which is cached. So if user has an access to group A, it will get cached version for the menu. The same applies for group B and for public area. But for events, once again, it's not available. As we have cached version for group a.menu.json. And if we want to deactivate, for example, one of the sub pages, let's say we want to deactivate page called event2. We deactivate that. Publish, continue, and the cached file for the navigation is gone, but everything else is in place, and also event two pages or uh, event two related files are gone, but everything else is in place, so we don't invalidate more than we want. So if we go back to the navigation, we go to menu, we open the menu, and we see that in group A we have only one page. So menu is up to date. And if we can check the cache, it's cached again until next change in the, on the child level. Another example, we have a page available in two languages, German and Italian. And we can see that this page is cached in German version. We want to have an up-to-date uh, language switch. So if we deactivate this page in Italian, if we unpublish it, we see that in German it's also flushed because we have the language switch in HTML and we flush it. But again, everything else is not touched at all. So we deactivate only language version in another language. So let's reload the page. And now language switch has only one language because another one was deactivated. Thank you for your time and have a good day.